very first time on February 1, it's going to be Good Morning Britain. Good morning. 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 Good morning, Britain. We'll be live on the ITV1 button from February 1. Hello, good morning and welcome to this special broadcast to the business, which means basically that the IBA has been good enough to grant TVM this half hour beamed primarily at you, the advertiser, and your needs. If you're not an advertiser and you happen to have found us this morning, then by all means stay tuned. Uh, you won't be doing anything illegal and there'll be no post office detector vans knocking on your door between now and uh, 8.30 and so on. The newspapers today, I suppose, are encouraging since this is our first uh, transmission. Uh, Patrick Walker's uh, Gazing into the Stars says the coming year must be one of the most important and memorable of your life. Although Anne Petrie of the Daily Star says keep some money in the bank because expenses could be heavy, but your self-confidence will zoom. So that was a nice greeting. Uh, also in the papers today from the Daily Telegraph, the surprise leader in the South African Sun City Golf Classic is David Frost. Well, that's as much of a surprise to me as it is to the... Uh, Daily Telegraph. And the Sun, page 11, has a wonderful story. History fan Janet Downer, 42, of Torquay, Devon, has spent 30 years tracing her family tree and found she is descended from Lady Godiva. Imagine all that work to discover that your great, 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 great grandmother was a streaker. Amazing story. And uh, Norman Tebbit, front page, huge front page in the Express here of uh, Norman Tebbit because he's complained that it took him three months to find someone who'd repair his garden gate. Uh, we've just heard, however, that the local employment office sent some people around and they now claim that it was Mr Tebbit himself who was unhinged. British Telecom yesterday deferred planned rises in the cost of telephone calls for three months or until you get through, whichever is the soonest. And that, of course, one of the great things we have compared to newspapers is the ability to update stories, things that have happened during the night that just haven't got into the paper or even into the 2 a.m. bit of the newspapers and so on. And, uh, and so we can follow up stories. We can check on the pound. For instance, the pound has steadied a little this morning, but the slide's probably not over. And uh, our reporters looked at a pound note this morning and uh, the Queen had still got a fingers crossed. And uh, our overnight TVM poll on Mrs. Thatcher's handling the economy, 32% approved, 35% disapproved, and the rest all tried to borrow money from our interviewer. So that's the sort of economic situation and so on. But we've got the immediacy to carry on with those stories, to update them and that sort of thing. And above all, we've got the chemistry and the people here in the studio. But right now, for a look at the general outlook, um, let's turn to our highly distinguished Weatherman, Commander David Philpot, RN. Ship's Company, good morning. As you can see, our TVAM weather map is really out of this world. It's beamed in from a satellite that doesn't think that Britain is just a blob on the left-hand side of Europe. As you can see, the fog has cleared from the Camden Lock area of London, and judging by the whirlwinds of activity generating in this area, I can safely predict brighter mornings for the whole country, beginning 1st of February. Yes. Brightness is the essence of Good Morning Britain, which will be a unique blend of news, news background, light-hearted fun and sheer good spirits. The sum total is a new kind of medium, more vigorous and illuminating than traditional television, more immediate and dramatic than radio, and more topical than a newspaper, however good, can possibly hope to be. And there's another important point of difference between your morning television service and your morning paper. Unlike the dailies, we don't have to adopt a tone of voice that reflects the opinions of specific segments of the market. We all know that different newspapers will tell the same story in completely different ways. And I suppose that's inevitable. After all, the Times, they say, is read by the people who run the country, the Guardian by the people who like to run the country, the Financial Times by the people who own the country, the Daily Telegraph by the people who remember the country as it used to be run. The Express by people who think the country is still being run that way. The Mail by the wives of the people who run the country. The Morning Star by the people who want another country to run the country. 
while sun readers don't really care who runs the country as long as they've got outstanding characteristics. I mean, preferably two outstanding characteristics. But I wonder how would our leading dailies have tackled the announcement of TVAM in their own distinctive, lovable ways, given the really free reign. This morning sees a further example of Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher's enlightened policy of free enterprise and the erosion of national state-controlled monopolies as a new morning television station, TVAM, appears on the airwaves for the first time. Established by a benign consortium of business, media and entertainment personalities, the new station offers more proof that the spirit of non-lame duck national enterprise is alive and kicking. In an attempt to divert the attention of the worker from the crises of Thatcherite imperialist monetarism, a new television station has been set up to offer petty bourgeois capitalists the opportunity to sell unwanted wares to a nation crippled by the burden of unemployment. It's all go this morning for a host of exciting new early morning bedroom pastimes. Yes, now Britain will be able to start its day in bed a great new way. And to celebrate, we're running a special feature, The Morning Bedroom Habits of the Stars. Yes, mornings will never be the same again. But unlike most of our national dailies, TVAM has no particular axe to grind. Our voice is going to be directed at anyone who is at home first thing in the morning, irrespective of age, class or income bracket. To the advertiser, that's important news. It was Claude Hopkins who defined advertising as salesmanship in print, a definition he formulated in the years BC, before commercials. But the word salesmanship is as important now as ever. On TV AM, one knock opens all the doors simultaneously. You don't have to don your tweeds to knock on the door of Times readers or put on your Andy Cap cloth cap to feel at home with mirror readers. When your commercial appears, it will instantly reach everyone in one fell swoop. Everyone that your message has been designed to reach. And that's because a commercial is an advertiser's way of imparting his latest message to those people he feels ought to hear it. And now, a special bulletin from Anna Ford. A dramatic breakthrough has been announced in reducing traffic jams on the major highways of Britain. Businessmen were shown new ways to make long journeys in quicker time and to reduce the tensions caused by severe traffic congestion before important meetings. In announcing this important news, a spokesman for the company, a Mr James Savile OBE, said, This is the age of the train. In Metropolis, a deadly killer was caught while attempting to push drugs to children in a dramatic citizen's arrest by a Mr Clark Kent, who was wearing fancy dress at the time. Here is some news footage just in the incident. Not so fast, nicotine. If you want to go up fast, take one of these. In an attempt to reduce the incidence of suburban slavery, a new weapon has been unveiled by a Newcastle company. A spokesman for the company explained in a national television broadcast that to reduce the vast numbers of women found chained to their washing machines, his chemists had come up with a powder that completes the family wash in half the normal time. Recognise those news items? I'm sure you do. They're all television commercials for major national advertisers. And to those advertisers, they all represent important news items. Right from the earliest days of advertising, commercial messages have been opportunities for a manufacturer to announce to his public that he's had a better idea than the outfit up the road. Many commercials are essentially news. They inform, they enlighten, they communicate, and the best of them also entertain. And that's also as fair a definition of TVAM as I can think of. So what finer environment for your sales message than that which sets out to do what you aim to do? Thank you, Anna. And now it's time for Michael, Michael Parkinson, who's just returned from masterminding England's quest for the ashes in Australia, and he's back here and uh, slaving away night and day in Camden Lock. Uh, did you, in fact, do any breakfast television while you were in Australia? Yeah, I did. I did a week there. It was a marvellous dummy run. It was splendid. Um, it was amazing getting back in the studio and, and doing live television, live magazine show, which is you know, where I sort of started from. I don't know for so long. Interesting, too, is in Australia because um, they've only had commercial television there in the mornings from uh, about two years ago. 
One station started off amid all the gloom that we're having here and all the sort of predictions in the press that, you know, nobody will watch it. And did well, very well, and well enough, in fact, for the other commercial station or another commercial station to come in and, and make it two. And both of them are doing very, very, very well indeed. So that's a kind of sort of, I think, a, a happy omen for us for the future. And I you, don't see any reason, for instance, why we should be different than, than Australia. Yeah. Yeah. One of the differences is, obviously, Australia at the moment haven't expanded into weekends, which we're... That's on. right, yes, they just do five days a week, um, and I'm going to sort of specialise for the first uh, few months, at, at least, uh, doing Saturday and Sunday, which actually suits me, because I think that, you know, you've got um, a different flavour coming in Saturday and Sunday. If you imagine the, the, the Monday to Friday as being the, the scope of a newspaper, then I think that that in fact on Saturday and Sunday you imagine the weekend magazine. And that's what I think of when we're making the programme. I mean, it's, it's preview and it's review. And it's all about things that, that fascinate me. I mean, it's about sport and it's about movies and it's about the arts generally and it's about leisure and it's about stars. I mean, I've got Michael Caine on the There's one year. subject that fascinates you you haven't mentioned. That's However, right. we will continue. <laughs> well, a bit of that too. Glamour <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> But, but, yes, sorry, you, you were about to say, we've got... Well, we've got Michael Caine uh, uh, doing a, an interview with us um, about being 50. And we'll do, the, we'll do that kind of interview within the, the general assembly of, of, of other sort of feature items. So it's very much a sort of feature feel at the weekends. Also, too, of course, we're, we're going to give Mum and Dad a sort of an extra hour in, in bed, particularly on, on Sunday mornings, because um, from 7 till 8 on Sundays, we're going to have a programme that's aimed directly kids so the kids can come downstairs while the parents stay upstairs and do whatever they want to do and we go on there from 8 till 9 15 with the sort of main feature program saturdays too at 8 30 we look after the kids again a bit older perhaps up to the age of 14 and they have their own program which has got pop in it and dance and all things like that happening from 8 30 to 9 15. so i think that you know across the board on, on weekends it should be it should be great great fun to be involved with well, bless you, Michael. I shall now do my Rod Hull impression. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, what you don't need is a postage stamp. And you so know it tastes as good as... Now, I wonder how many of those advertisers' names you can actually remember. You know, when you think that the average magazine contains over 200 advertisements all jostling for your attention, there's another couple of hundred in the newspapers, say two or three radio commercials every five or six minutes, and then hoardings and tube cards papering every mile on your journey to work. You know, you'd be hard put to recall even 10% of them, and that's when you're really trying. The difference with TVAM is quite simply this. We get there before they do in the privacy of your own home when your mind is still relatively relaxed from a night's sleep and still uncluttered. Certainly more so than after a day's slog and when the evening meal is still heavy in your tummy. You know, there's medical evidence that the mind is at its sharpest and most receptive first thing in the morning. For instance, how often has a song that you heard first thing in the morning returned to haunt you all day? You just can't get it out of your mind. Now, there's got to be a good value in being first on the shopping list. With TVAM, it's a bit like being given, say, a, a free pass to enter the stadium for a pop concert half an hour before the thousands of jostling fans are allowed in. You've got more time to think, to consider, to react. Then on the journey itself, you pass shops, news agents, post boxes, and if you take your car to work, garages. So you can react positively to the message that you heard earlier in the piece of your own home. And surely it's better to promote your product or your service when the shops are opening rather than the night before when they've shut. And people have had, say, what, anything from 10 to 15 hours to forget all about what they so eagerly reacted to the night before. Only one medium offers you the opportunity to wheel out all the tools of salesmanship, sound, vision and movement before the shops are open. And that's the one that you're watching right now. Angela's absolutely right. Uh, except for burglars, evening television commercials can give them some wonderful ideas. But anyway, it's not just the national advertiser who'll benefit from the new morning opportunities. The potential for the regional advertiser will be just as massive. TVAM gives the local businessman the same weight and authority as the major nationals at a fraction of the cost. Or even the biggest multinational has the opportunity to restrict his audience and test market a new product or brand for an easily affordable sum. Every morning, the main regions will carry their own topical news and traffic information, and local advertisers can stand cheek by jowl with the nation at large. 
And it's farewell to ordinary breakfast as families all around the country wake up to something really crunchy for a change by ordering their breakfast from... The West Yorkshire Lark Sanctuary, where thousands of our little feathered friends... ...make housewives even happier than... ...your friendly local second-hand car dealer whose cars contain... ...no oil, no padding, no onion bits. Every fish finger is made from... ...the hands of a stranger now showing at your local Odeon. To eradicate this awful film completely, brush your teeth regularly with the only toothpaste to contain the secret ingredient... Michael Parkinson, whom we'll be joining for the best in live morning entertainment. I'm Linda Berry. And I'm Tim Hodlin. And we both look forward to joining you soon when we'll fill your cereal bowl with... Director of Programmes Michael Deakin, talking to David Frost. Michael, the question I get asked a lot is, is TVAM really going to be different? And if so, how? Well, TV is going to be different in lots of ways. It's going to be different, really, I suppose, in three main ways. It's going to be different because it's the first network ITV station. It's the first company which isn't just a regional company. It's different because it's the first commercial station, by which I mean it's the first time we've really got to live on our ratings. It's never happened before. Um, if you had a license, I don't know, in Manchester, like our colleagues and friends in Manchester have, your ratings are important, but they're not the paramount importance. We're a one programme company, and it's our lifeblood. I think the third way it's different, and it comes from the second way, it's different because I talk to Derek Stevenson. Um, it's not often that programme controllers and directors of sales are quite so close together. We think and we talk a great deal more. We are a very commercially minded place. That's different. And we had, what, 10,000 applications from people we were delighted wanted to join us. Uh, when it came to sifting those, apart from taking a speed reading course, um, what, what principles did you follow? Well, it's true that some, some countries have had wine lakes and butter mountains and we had an application mountain. It was absolutely enormous and very exciting. I think what we decided to do was have the best people, more or less regardless. And at the end of the day, TVM is very different in the kind of staff we've got. I mean, our average age here is under 30. And including me, I mean, I've just aged a little this last year. I'm 29 myself, as you know. Without the beard. Without the beard. It, but I've aged a lot this last year. But even so, our average age is, is under 30, and we're more than half women in the production staff. That's never happened before. You go upstairs, it's like sort of the walls vibrate with the enthusiasm of these young people. And what they're doing is they're making um, more television than anybody else in England outside the BBC. TVM is the second biggest producer of television in England. BBC is bigger. We are bigger than Thames. Thames do 18 hours, we do 23. And we more than half increase the size of children's programming. We make an enormous extra amount of sport. It isn't just a program, it's an enormous amount of output. TVM is a great factory and very exciting. And my goodness, the walls bulge with them and their excitement. And since I've got you right here on the record, I've got to get up at 4.30 every morning. Do you hereby pledge to do the same? I hereby pledge that every morning I will watch your programmes. Um, even watching our output is 23 hours a week, is half a week's work. But I pledge I'll see every frame of every inch of tape that you make. Where? Some of it in the privacy of my own home, some of it in the privacy of the studios. This is what I feared. Thank you, Michael. One of the subjects, anyway, that Michael will be seeing a lot of on TVAM, wherever he's watching it, is sport. And here to gaze into the future is author, former Olympic coach, and now our sports editor, Tom McNabb. Thank you, David. It's a little early in the year, I suppose, to make my forecast for 1983, but I have a sneaky idea who will be up there among the winners when the year draws to an end. See if you can guess who I'm talking about from the clues I give you. Imagine first a greater striking power than Kevin Keegan. More drive and clout than Ian Botham, though I'm not too sure whether my contender can also manage that third shredded week. Chalk up more big breaks than Steve Davis' snooker cue. Have as sharp an aim as dart marksman Jockey Wilson, despite an uncanny ability to avoid the bull. As good a balance as gymnast Nadia Comaneci. More staying power than Sebastian Cole. Carry even more weight than Jeff Capes and a voice that carries even further than the super brat. You've probably guessed already that I'm talking about TVM as my tip for the top. Every morning we'll be bringing the latest sports news from around the world, along with previews of the sporting fixtures of the day. As an advertiser, you'll be given the chance to put your products alongside some of the greatest names in sport. And it isn't just top class sport we're covering. Do you know that every year British runners lose 10 million pounds of body weight? That's the equivalent of 80,000 people simply vanishing into thin air every year. Despite that, recreation is Britain's fastest growing industry, developing at 21% a year. We'll be right in there with regular programs and what ordinary people are doing. 
aerobic dance, running, swimming and tennis. It's more than just a sporting chance you'll be giving yourself. With shrewd media buying, you can end up with the closest thing to erasing certainty. Derek, let me uh, ask you a question that uh, every member of our studio crew will be listening to your answer with bated breath. Um, how are sales going? Exceedingly well. With, uh, even with two weeks uh, before transmission. We're something in the region of 60% sold for February. And... Uh, lots of advertisers? Lots of advertisers, yes. Um, we un no advertiser would thank me for naming names, but certainly the range is very interesting. Pharmaceuticals, to retailers, to publications, motor cars, uh, toiletries, housewares, quite a range. And I'm very excited about that range because we're not just into breakfast products, which are clearly going to be there. Well, I know television, you've taught me this, is a, uh, I am your pupil here, is a short-term short, short -term business, but uh, how are we doing for the, for the first week, for February the 1st, seven days after that? Uh, for the first week we're virtually sold, which is tremendous, except of course um, there is business that wants to get on and we're trying to find ways of getting that business on at the moment, but it's difficult. Maybe, There's a lot of enthusiasm for the first Maybe week, the course. major companies would give us an extra three hours or something like that. <laughs> well, from Derek with the good news in the UK to the United States, which we've been mentioning quite a bit, where we decided... To